Welcome to Talks on the Beach. Earlier today, I was watching a news story about the immigration situation we have going on right now. There's a school in Brooklyn, New York, whose students were forced to work remote. That means from home for you remedial people who don't know what remote means. The students were told to work from home because the school needed to temporarily house thousands of illegal immigrants due to the bad weather. Parents in Brooklyn outraged after the city decided to use their kids' school to house migrants who had to be evacuated from the Floyd Bennett Field during yesterday's storm. The decision forced the school to shift to remote learning for the day. Jessica Formoso takes a look at how the city is addressing that disruption. To understand where I, Dusty Vision, stands on the illegal immigration situation, let's take it all the way back. When my father, RIP, left me at a young age, my mother married a Mexican man. Specifically, he was straight from Sonora, Mexico. San Luis, Rio, Colorado, Sonora, Mexico, to be exact. And I grew up to love this man as a father figure. And his family became my family. They never treated me differently because I was, quote, black. In fact, my abuelita Consuelo, who is still alive to this day, talked to me in Spanish. And if I didn't understand or learn to understand what she was saying, I might not have eaten that day. Joke, obviously. But yes, I did learn a lot about the Mexican culture growing up in East Long Beach with my step family. A lot of my earliest memories in life were with my familia. My tia Chela, my tio Cesar, my cousin Jose. Well, technically, he's my uncle, but he's younger than me. And that's a whole other story, so we'll just move on. I remember watching Sabado Gigante on Saturday nights while my mom had to work. Watching Chavo del Ocho, novelas. I didn't understand what the F they were saying, but the eye candy kept me glued to the screen. I've always had a thing for Latinas. Latinas are just yummy. Not taking anything away from other women because beautiful comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors, but I've always had my eye on Latina women. That all started when I moved from East Long Beach to Bell Gardens, which is a city located in Southeast LA. That is where I really, really started to notice Latina girls. And that has always been my flavor. I'm happily married to a beautiful Mexican woman. We've been married for 13 years now. That's my baby, my Haina, my Ruka, the sexiest woman alive to me. Straight from Mexico, born in Tijuana. All that being said, this current immigration situation really worries me. I know a lot. I know most of you don't really know what's going on because Let's face it, you don't really care. You don't really care until it affects you. Like it's affecting the people in Brooklyn, New York right now. Who had to keep their kids home from school so thousands of migrants could have shelter during the winter storm. Tensions running high outside James Madison High School in Brooklyn Wednesday morning where nearly 2,000 migrants spent the night braving the storm. Our kids should not be used. Uh, our, uh, the school should not be used. It's a sectionary for the learning. Our kids are supposed to be here feeling safe and be able to learn. The city's decision to relocate migrant families from Floyd Bennett Field to the high school didn't sit well with parents and local officials who say the administration put the needs of the migrants ahead of their children. And I don't blame the migrants one bit. 
If our current president and our current administration is dumb enough to announce to the world that America is wide open, come on in. We'll give you a bunch of money. We'll give you a bunch of resources. We'll set you up in housing. Shit, I'd come too if I were in another country. I don't knock one person who is trying to take advantage of this time. In fact, I commend them. Come on in. This is your chance. They stole the country from you hundreds of years ago. Here's your chance to possibly steal it back. I'm literally not hating on the migrants. I'm hating on our dumb ass government for allowing this to get out of control. This is a little worrisome, guys. I personally believe that 99% of the people who are crossing over our borders are coming over for good intentions. They're coming over so they can have a better life, so they can give their children and their families a better life. But what about that 1%? Let's just say it's 1% that wants to do us harm. What about them? All it takes is one. And that is the part that worries me. That part right there. And Trump tried to say this years ago, but he's a ding dong, so he didn't really say it correctly when he said, They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. We're letting a lot of people into our country right now who aren't being vetted. Just come on in and do whatever. Come on in and go wherever. That is the part that worries me. The year 2020 kicked our asses, and we're still recovering from that. Our resources are so very limited right now and to think that we are letting millions and millions and millions more in to share these limited resources is worrisome and you know who it's going to affect the most right whose jobs it's going to affect the most the hood the inner cities the quote Sanctuary cities who are just going to keep shipping in hundreds of thousands of millions of more people into a place that is already struggling. The jobs are already limited as it is. They took our job. Yeah, it was funny when it was a joke on South Park, huh? Well, soon and very soon, sooner than you think, this will be the reality. Right now, Americans are scraping up whatever jobs they can to survive. Think about what it's going to be like for your children in 10 years. And in my personal life, most of the hardworking, taxpaying, home-owning Latino families I know are just as worried as I am about the current immigration situation. Is there any way to fix this? Comment down below. And thank you for tuning in to Talks on the Beach. More than 80 buses pulled up to James Madison High School Tuesday evening. The family slept in the auditorium chairs and on the floor with blankets. By 4.15 this morning, they were all returned to Floyd Bennett Field. The shelter operations at James Madison High School, <clears throat> managed by health and hospitals, were nothing short of remarkable. They supplied essentials like baby formula, baby bottles, hot food, snacks, water, and blankets. But some parents claiming they were never notified of the move and what outraged them even more, the fact that students stayed home today and learned remotely. None of the teachers signed up for remote learning and the ones that did from other parents that I heard uh, said good morning, posted the assignments and just left. 